Galileo Galilei, the man who persuaded the world that the Earth rotated around the Sun and invented amazing telescopes that helped us look into space 500 years ago, once said, The book of nature is written in the language of mathematics. I love and have always loved maths. I also love nature, and we spent hours walking in the parks and countryside. I can see that maths is all around us, and I have spent some time looking at four famous mathematicians who have shown us the maths in nature. I want to start with a man named Leonardo Fibonacci. Fibonacci lived in Italy around 1,000 years ago. He was the son of a merchant. He used to travel around with his father and watch him buying and selling goods. This meant that he became very interested in numbers. As he grew up, he studied hard and wrote a number of books about maths. But what he is most famous for is something called the Fibonacci sequence. The sequence came about when he posed this question. If you put a pair of rabbits in a walled garden, a boy and a girl, how many pairs will be produced in one year if every month each pair produces another? He came up with something like this. One and one, then two. One and one added together, then three. One and two added together, and so forth. He kept adding the numbers next to each other together and then put that result at the end of the sequence. Finally, he had something like this. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and 13, and so on. He put these numbers into a diagram, and it looks something like this. Now, this is called phi, and you can see it everywhere in nature. Here you can see it as plants grow. Here you can see it in the tail of a seahorse. And even here, these are pictures of real galaxies taken in space. You can see the spiral in each of them. Now, when I go for a walk along a park, or in, along, sorry, in a park or along any road, I can see that the mass around me has a mathematical pattern to it. This makes it very interesting. As well as plants, I like animals. And one day, I realized that some animals had quite similar patterns on their backs. So I decided to look into it. I came across a man named Georgi Voronoi. Voronoi was a Ukrainian mathematician, and he lived around 100 years ago. Sadly, he only died when he was 40, but he did discover something very important, the Voronoi pattern. You can picture this pattern like this. If you were to sprinkle some salt on a table and then draw lines that were equidistant to each of the grains, you would get the Voronoi pattern. You can see this pattern everywhere around you in nature. Here you can see it on the back of a turtle. Here you can even see it on the skin of a giraffe. And here you can see it on the inside of the skin of an onion. Next time you go for a walk, have a look around you, maybe at a leaf or some dried mud, and you will see a familiar pattern. Talking of patterns on animals, I came across another man named Archimedes. Archimedes was a Greek mathematician and philosopher, and he lived around 2,300 years ago. That's 300 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. And he was a very clever man and made many very important discoveries in the world of mathematics. One of the best things that he did was to discover the number pi. Pi is the number you get if you divide the circumference of a circle, the way round it, by the, idea, by the diameter, the way through it. Pi is very simple to work out, and it's a very, very amazing number. Three things that are amazing about it are that it goes on forever and ever. It never repeats itself, and it has been calculated to over one trillion digits. That's a million millions. What is also incredible about the number pi is that scientists have discovered that the placement and frequency of some markings on animals' backs are to do with the number pi like here on the dots on this starfish, or here on the spots on this whale. When I was looking into pi, I discovered that it was called an irrational number, which means you can never put it all into one place. It just keeps going on and on forever. When I was looking into irrational numbers, I discovered there was also something called an imaginary number, a number that doesn't exist. And the man often thought responsible of imaginary numbers was a man named Leonard Euler. Euler was a Swiss mathematician, and he lived around the 1700s, so around 300 years ago. He looked something like this, and he wanted to be able to calculate things to do with sound waves, light waves, and waves in the water. 
At his time, he didn't have any way to do this, so he decided to come up with his own way. But the thing, this is the weird thing about the thing he did. He came up with a number, but a number that didn't exist. He came up with the number square root of negative 1. But we all know the square root of negative 1 is impossible because negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. But he used it anyway, and he came up with some very clever calculations like this one. He now he called it i, and this is an example of a calculation that he did. Now everybody uses i to work out things like sound waves, light waves, waves in the water, and even things to do with microwaves. I have come to see that maths is not just a boring subject that we have to do in school. It is everywhere we look and in everything we see. And I especially love the saying of a famous Indian mathematician named Shakuntala Devi, who only died a few years ago, but before she did, she said, without mathematics, there is nothing you can do. Everything around you is mathematics. Everything around you is numbers. <laughs>